thinking of investing, working, or starting a business in the cannabis industry? We've got you covered right here on Plant Problems. Hosted by Tony Frischconnect, Plant Problems takes a different approach to cannabis than what you're seeing and hearing from the mainstream media. Come along with Tony and be in the know about how to invest, work, or start a cannabis business. Let's get the show started with your host, Tony Frischconnect. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Plant Problems. I'm your host, Tony Frischnick. I'm excited to have you guys here today. I've got somebody that I think is going to be unique to the cannabis industry, especially given the times and the busyness and how fast it's growing here in the U.S. I found some unique individuals at the MJ BizCon event in Las Vegas, Nevada. And if you haven't been to this show yet, it's definitely worth checking out. I, I believe it's probably the largest show out there of its kind. Of course, it's in Vegas. So this year they got between thirty and 35,000 visitors. Huge. You have everything from packaging all the way up to CBD products, extraction, lighting. They've got a couple thousand expo people there. So if you're looking at just wanting to walk around and really seeing what is out in the cannabis world, this is the place to check it out. And so it happens every fall, generally November, December time. This is the first time it's been in December. For whatever reason, they had moved it up to that. This is one of the great shows to attend, especially if you're looking at trying to find something new as well as meet a lot of different people from all over the world. Speaking of all over the world, my next guest currently works at her practice, the Zulu International Legal Office, where she represents a variety of clients, international and domestic, commercial and private, on exclusively cannabis and hemp-related cases. One particular area of focus is on the legality of CBD in Taiwan, which remains in the gray area where she works to clarify and pioneer these policies. Hi, I'm here with Zoe Lee from Taiwan. Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Zoe. Thank you for having me here, Tony. You're welcome. Thanks for being on Plan Problems. I am bringing Zoe to this episode because there's some unique things that are happening in Taiwan. And she is an attorney in Taiwan. Zoe, what did you go specifically to law school for? I went to law school for criminal law, and right now I'm a cannabis lawyer in Taiwan. I think it's really, really interesting. There's not a lot of, I haven't met anybody from Taiwan that's a cannabis attorney at this point. There's probably not too many of you, right? I'm one and only (laughs) cannabis lawyer. I only do like wee cases, seriously. So the reason why I thought this was interesting to the listeners out there is they're working on pretty much being pioneers in the industry out there. And I write in my book that that's one of the unique positions on being ahead of everybody else that is going somewhere where nobody else is. Mm-hmm. I would say Taiwan fits right up in that area. So I want to ask Zoe a few questions today, and she's going to actually ask me some questions. We're going to kind of reverse role on the interview, and we're going to talk a little bit here. Zoe, this is exciting for me. It's really exciting for me, too. So, Zoe, we talked earlier today, and you are actually running for Congress in Taiwan, candidate at large. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. I'm running on behalf of Green Party Taiwan. As like a green party everywhere. U.S. has green party as well. We are all like under Global Greens. This like a brand, global brand. So Green Party Taiwan like decided to nominate me as like candidate at like at large, going to a like, parliament. Basically, it's lawmaker, and the election is on next year, January 11th. Actually, it's, it's quite fast. They put me there to represent them on legalization of medical cannabis. So how long have you been in the lobbying process on medical cannabis with the state? Is that actually happening now or that's what they want you to do in Congress? Is that the idea? They want me to do it in Congress because cannabis in Taiwan is still scheduled to like drug. And if you transport it or you producing it, you're facing seven years at least in jail. So it's pretty legal like that. Yeah, that's... uh... There wouldn't be too many people in this country if they had seven years mandatory 
they would go to prison if they were caught manufacturing cannabis, that's for sure. This is your first time at MJ Biz in, in Vegas, right? Yes, this is my first time, yeah. What did you think today? This is like a big industry. Even though we don't touch THC product, we still could do a lot for a whole supply chain from like equipment companies, from packaging companies, everything. So I feel like this is way more than we thought of legalized marijuana or even industrial hemp. So I think it's a great opportunity to learn and bring this experience back to Taiwan public to the government what we're missing as a whole trend in the world. So there's obviously a lot of friendly people that want to see you push medical cannabis through in Taiwan. What are the opponents that you're dealing with and some of the stigmas, obviously, of marijuana? What do those people look like? Can you explain a little bit more about them? People doesn't like this idea. They're more like a conservative people. Doctors have concern on that. It's debating in doctors' group, like some like a mental health association like medical association they really pro, pro this because they see how cbd works for like anxiety or other purpose i mean medical purpose we actually having doctors like a younger doctors really trying to like legalize everything but for the older generation in asia we're conservative and we don't know about marijuana so they just don't talk about it and they're afraid about it. So basically, our opponents is like the public, the conservative, or let's say the boomers. Is that okay to say that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we're trying to like educate basically moms like, okay, this actually is good for you. If I have like, I mean, just start with CBD, give them like positive like imagination of we wash, try to washing out that kind of like a gangster, like a drug, like crazy people, hippies. Like we're trying to wash it out hopefully get their support. Well, that's good. I know it's a battle. I think I remember back in 2006 when we were going to local council meetings in our localities and speaking out for, and then there were some that were against, and a lot of them were policemen and stuff like that that were against us. So it seems like it's very similar to what most other places are dealing with. So you're criminal law, but what's made you switch over to focusing completely on cannabis? Why did you decide to go that route with your profession? Actually, it started with I'm being practiced in law for five years. And for my junior years in like as a young lawyers, I do commercial law, of course. Every mom's the family want to like go to law school, make big money, like typical Asian thought. I know it's like, it's like, okay to say that it's like Asian thought. Anyway, so I started with commercial firm, like I worked in that and go to like some environmental NGOs. I hang out with a lot of people, actually they're cannabis users in Taiwan, which is still really illegal. And when they know I'm like a practice lawyer, they'll ask me a lot of questions about like, okay, what if I get caught? Like, how, how can I deal with it? So I started answer their questions online and sometimes it's friend of the friend and getting bigger. And I, there's a fan page called 420 Taiwan. It's like a group of people trying, you can tell from the name, yeah, yeah. trying to push legalization. So I joined them for a while to answer people's legal questions. And after I come back, oh, I studied in Paris for like a year. After I came back from Paris, I was like, okay, it's about time to have my own firm. Since I could decide what kind of cases I could get, right, I could take, and I decided to do cannabis because for answering those, like, friends, acquaintances, people I know online, I did a lot of research on cannabis law. I like cannabis. I want to live like it. So that's how I started. You also have a podcast, correct? Yes, I do have a podcast. And the name that is in Chinese, and the name is Da Ma Fan Bu Fan, means marijuana is not a trouble. Because marijuana in Mandarin is da ma, and trouble is ma fan. So da ma fan sounds like big trouble or marijuana trouble. So I play this term and make a yeah. podcast and teaching people how not to get in trouble with cannabis problem. So you're helping the new user or the black market person just try to stay safe and stay out of trouble, right? Yes, but we need to really careful. I cannot that public thing encouraging people to commit a crime yeah yeah so you've got to really as a t an attorney you've got to yes. kind of tippy toe around that a lot how long have you been doing the podcast uh i started doing it around like uh, six months we started a little bit slow so we only have like uh, five six episodes 
like release right now, but we've been recorded over 10 episodes. Basically, we finished the first season, but we still need some editing. That's great. Well, I appreciate, and I know there's a lot of people out there that can appreciate mm-hmm. somebody being able to help out the little person for whatever reason, either they are ignorant of what the laws are, mm-hmm. they don't have the money to go to an attorney and ask them these questions. So I appreciate people like you in our industry that are making lives better. So I pr- thank you for that. Thank you, Tony. Actually, the thing I'm trying to do is like a basically legal empowerment to those users and they could be one help. Think about it. If this movement needs like grassroots voice from users, from people everywhere. So if the authority easily lock those people in the jail, then no one will like stand up and speak for this. So I'm just basically, well, helping them to do that for my own sake. And also the other thing like Taiwanese people sometimes is facing is they buy either marijuana or buy like LSD on the dark web, online basically. And you ship it across the border and are, now you're facing like a trafficking instead of just like processing it. So it's from if you only have like processing weed or use weed in Taiwan, you probably won't go to jail. You just the worst case scenario is you need to go to rehab for 40 days. That's the worst case. Okay, scenario. But if you buy weed online, and unfortunately, it ship it to abroad, and you're trafficking it, you're facing seven years plus. But ordinary people just understand that they don't understand like why there's difference between buying weed from person and buying it online. It's a borders thing is probably what it is. Yeah. That's how they get them. That, it's kind of a trap, mm-hmm. unfortunately. And they do it here, not that to that extreme for sure. So where do most people get their cannabis in Taiwan since it's highly illegal? Normally, you could just talk to people at bar, like some nightclub, just talk to people. Like sometimes I even like just smoking my rolling cigarette. So basically where you get it, where you buy online. It's interesting that you say that because that's not much different than anywhere else, right? It's just when you go, I know when I go on vacation and I see, and I'm in a different country, obviously it would be nice to be able to pick up some cannabis, but you don't know where to do it and where to do it safe. What are the big barriers that you guys are dealing with in going to Taiwan and and trying, besides creating a law, because that's what you're doing, what kind of barriers do you have in front of you? I think it's the public's like opinion on weed because like litigation is always a con on the supporting rate of each political parties. So if the public against this, it's really hard to push over. Like we just legalized like a same sex gay marriage basically. It's not because about the referendum, it's not because like a parliament suddenly decided to like change the law. It's because our constitution court find it unconstitutional to don't let like a same sex people having like getting married. That's how we make this is we use, we don't go through the parliament, but go through like constitution court, but not like cannabis legalization. We cannot copy this method. So we really, the obstacle is how we could convince the public this is not harmful. This is actually good for everyone. Financially, healthily, mental health, and even like social justice problems. It's really hard to convince all the experts and the public as well. What have you seen this last couple of days that you're going to take home from this event that you're going to use to help you further your either your business in law or your future businesses that you're creating? I'm thinking from like two different perspectives. One is, interestingly, I found several law firms here in the BizCon. That just like evidence proof I'm not crazy. When I just started my firm, I told people I'm only taking cannabis like cases. Everyone say I'm crazy. It's like no one uses cannabis in Taiwan. You're gonna like stop this or when they're trying to give me other like divorce case or like they just afraid out like I'm out of business, whatever. But by seeing those firms, several firms only do cannabis from tax law, from like everything. Just proof I'm not crazy. This is a real thing. So it's confirming that you feel like you're heading down the right direction then. Yes, right? yes. That's very like exciting. Like, I was like speechless when I found it. And I was like, is it a real thing? Thank God it's a real thing. Yeah, this is one perspective. The other thing is we found, actually found a Taiwanese company here. They're selling LED light. Yeah. Growing light. We're like Bob and I. Bob is like our, my business partner, Mary Jane. We were like, wait, are they Taiwanese? 
it's like, yeah, and those people like found us because we were speaking Mandarin out loud. They're like, oh, you're from Taiwan. I'm like, yeah. It's like, wow, it's amazing. They're selling, they're like middle aged people running like small business. They probably have a factory making LED or other equipments. It's nothing real. I mean, only used in weed industry. But that's the people who never support legalization of marijuana. But if we can let those people, those men, like a small companies or manufacturers, understand they actually could be profitable by pushing legalization, that'll be a different thing. Well, one thing that I notice in Colorado is that the majority of people that were thinking of getting into cannabis or were in cannabis, they were really hush hush about it. So that's mm-hmm. probably why you don't hear anything about it, is because those people are underground and they're not telling they're going over to different countries like the mm-hmm. US and selling their products and that's what's happening. Yeah. Like but if our Bureau of Industry knows that this is like a whole new like dehumidifier, air purifier, likely we produce a lot of LED lights in Taiwan. And semiconductors like to control all the like temperature, humidity, like that kind of panel, even like a software engineer. The whole supply chain is so big, it's nothing to do. It's just, let's say, non-THC related industry is probably like 7% of the supply chain is nothing. You don't need to touch those things. I opened the experience. I was like streaming all the time. Like, hey, look, people, look, those companies, did you see the packaging company? Did you see like a temperature controlling company? Did you see like LED? Like I keep running out of LEDs because yeah, there's a yeah, lot of we have LED like <laughs> lows. LED companies in Taiwan. So I think that's a big chance if they could understand that. It's good to get a different perspective, especially from somebody that's so far away. I think that's great. I want to ask if you were to say to the new person that was interested in cannabis, what would be the one thing you told them if they want to get into the cannabis industry? You mean in Taiwan or in the rest of the country? Doesn't matter. Okay, I would say start with CBD. Start with industrial hemp because, first of all, CBD is not a controlled substance in Taiwan. It's like medicine, but you could basically bring it with you, like a bride, or you ship it like for personal use. I think you can start with that, industrial hemp, because it's nothing to do with like a THC. And actually, the funny fact is, growing hemp is not illegal in Taiwan. Just no one dared to do that. It's really tricky. So I'm looking for maybe some people brave enough to do that with us. Like, it's a good try. Like, okay, I say, because our criminal law says if you attempt to produce Schedule 2 drugs by growing cannabis and you're violating the law, facing five years plus in the jail. But if you're not attempt to do that, like, I found a case. They found innocent that the person grew 20 cannabis flowering. Nice big bug flower. I saw a picture on, on the news. And he found innocent in that because he found that, okay, I grew it. It's not for to produce any substance. I know THC is super illegal and I don't like it. I grew it for making salad, eating its leaves. Well, it's good to know that you guys have a good judicial system at this and it still takes care of the society and mm-hmm. people that are the citizens of the society. So before we switch over and have you ask me some questions, I wanted to allow you to give people a way to contact you if they're interested in talking about Taiwanese law or cannabis side or interested in contacting you about anything. Okay, I have a Telegram account as my Telegram ID is Better Call Zoe. It's like Better Call Zoe, but Better Call Zoe, better call Zoe. B-E-T-T-E-R-C-A-L-L-Z-O-E. Yes, I'm Zoe with a Y. And I have a Facebook fan page as a www.facebook.com slash radicalzoe. And also you can email me on Zoe Lee, Z-O-E dot L-E-E at Mary Jen, M-A-R-I-G-E-N dot U-S. You also can email me on that. You've just listened to another insightful episode of Plant Problems. If you like what you heard so far, don't forget to tell your friends and colleagues. For additional resources or to leave a review, head over to plantproblems.com. Join us again next week on Plant Problems with Tony Frischconnect. We look forward to having conversations with you as we go along this journey. 